today is a good day. I picked up the new MacBook Pro 16 M1 Max. And I would like to share my thought process behind the reason why I picked it up with you. Maybe my reasoning will help you if you're also thinking about getting a new laptop as a professional data scientist or data engineer. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe, and I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years now. So after using 13-inch laptops for a while, I was in the market for something with a bigger screen. My reason for that was that since I'm from time to time switching between my office, clients and a co-working space, I don't always have access to an external display. So I decided that I prefer a bigger screen to have more screen real estate for the tools I'm working with every day. I started to look into different offerings like the Dell XPS 15 or 17 or the Lenovo X1 Extreme laptops. Um, yeah, the Intel-based MacBook Pro 16 by this time was already kind of outdated and I wasn't sure whether I want to wait for the new MacBook Pro since there was no definitive release date. But then, after some time, Apple dropped the bomb and here it was, the new MacBook Pro with the new M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. And so there was finally another option to be considered. I'm tackling my reasoning from the consumer perspective of a professional data scientist and data engineer. I bought the laptop with my own money and I'm not affiliated in any way with Apple. So here's the laptop that I got. Uh, I'm too cool for the rules, baby, get off of me. Never need no push, I do it all for me. Keep a couple real hitters, got them on. Throughout my career, I daily drove many different laptops and many different operating systems. From Windows over various Linux distributions and of course macOS. At some point in time, I even set up and daily drove a Gentoo Linux Stage 1 installation. And people, I'll tell you, people who know what this is, they know how much pain that was. And I mention that because the MacBook Pro 16 M1 Max does not exist in a vacuum, but there are also many other nice laptops around, like the Dell XPS 15 or 17, or like, as I said, the, the, the laptops from Lenovo and like, yeah, some others. And uh, yeah, a decision for a laptop is also kind of a decision for an operating system. So you kind of really have to choose wisely. Let's dive into why I've chosen the MacBook Pro over the Dell XPS or any other nice Windows or Intel based laptop. The list will be in order of importance for me. And uh, the last points are the most important points from my point of view. The battery life and power efficiency of M1 based laptops is quite amazing and super hyped up in the general press or other YouTube videos. For me though, it's the least important point. Kind of crazy if you think about that I'm talking about a portable device, but even though it's nice to have a longer battery life in some situations, I rarely find myself away from a power outlet while doing some actual work. But still, in situations where you forgot your charger at home, and let's be real, that happened more often than I'm willing to admit, it would still be nice to get through the whole day and not running out of juice after like four hours or so. Apple is doing one thing particularly, wow, this is a difficult word for German, uh, particularly well, and that is building an ecosystem. I use an iPhone, an iPad Pro and AirPods on a daily basis, and it's just amazing how well those things work together. You have been somewhere with your cell phone where you already entered the Wi-Fi login into, later you bring your laptop and it's already connected without the need to enter your login information uh, on your laptop as well. Uh, small time saver, but still it's super convenient. Also being able to copy paste across devices is neat, handoff for the airports across devices is super nice, and yeah, this, this is, those are those small little things that yeah, if you tell them to, somewhat, to somebody, they yeah, don't seem that big of a deal, but in the daily, day-to-day -day use, yeah, this is just amazing and makes you really think about, oh yeah, do I really want to, to leave this ecosystem behind? When M1 was released, everyone was amazed by its performance and when the new M1 Pro and M1 Max uh, chips were released, things got even better. My personal typical tasks that I need to be able to do on a daily basis are programming with different programming languages like Java, Scala or Python, run local versions of data processing systems that I'm developing code for like Apache Beam or Spark, usually via Docker and 
some little small shameless plug. I have some nice videos regarding Docker on the channel, so check them out. Um, yeah, then I also do data manipulations with Python and all, all its various libraries like pandas, numpy and so on and so on. And finally, I also uh, develop machine learning models and need to validate them and train them and all those nice things. Tasks that are heavily dependent on computational resources uh, usually get run on my big boy over there. It's still good to have some power while on the go, so I am not limited when I, for whatever reason, don't have access to the big boy. And the M1 Max MacBook Pro delivers here. It's powerful enough to handle all my daily tasks without even breaking a sweat. For me, a good display is very important. I mean, that is the thing that you look into the whole day while trying to decipher the small characters on the screen that are your programming code. I can forgive things like crappy speakers and they are, by the way, also very excellent on the new MacBook Pro, but the display is quite important, so I cannot forgive a crappy display. And the display of the new MacBook Pro is so good, oh boy, it's so good. In fact, I would say it's the best display that I've seen so far, ever. It's quite hard for other laptops to compete with that. And yes, 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 yes. There is a notch, but quite frankly, I don't care, since it is only blocking the menu bar and not interfering with any applications that I'm using, so I'm fine with the notch. Now, we come to the more essential things. Those might be a bit controversial, but those are my opinions and you are very free to disagree. If you disagree, please leave a comment down below and yeah, by the way, also leave a comment if you agree. Also, uh, you made it this far into the video, so please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell icon. This would really, really help me out a lot, so thanks for that. As I said before, I was tempted to go with a Windows laptop after the Apple events in April and September. Uh, I was kind of losing the hope for the new 16-inch MacBook Pros to be released anytime soon with all this craziness that is currently going on in the world, but I still couldn't pull the trigger and buy one and um, yeah that's because because in my opinion windows just plain sucks for development i know i know it's a strong statement i know but hear me out on that so at least for me and also for many other people in the projects that i'm working on a main part of our work is to run different tools and programs through the command line interface for example interacting with docker installing packages and so on and so on and, and at some point you can't live without a proper shell anymore also installing programs and tools in the windows system directory structure feels kind of odd to me I mean, Python is installed in user bin Python and not in program files Python whatever whatever, right? Just feels kind of strange. And it seems Microsoft is aware of that and tries to fix that, so they introduced uh, WSL2. And I'm aware of WSL2 and I'm aware of things like SIGWIN, but still, it isn't a great experience. WSL2, even though somewhat integrated, still feels like working with a virtual machine and not all tools are properly working with it, like for example IntelliJ or PyCharm, the integration just isn't that good. It's just a hassle that I don't want to get into on a daily basis while trying to, yeah, while actually trying to get real work done for my clients. Don't get me wrong, I really like what Microsoft is trying with WSL2, but in, at least in my opinion, it's not there yet. Um, yeah, if they keep up the good work, it at some point I'm sure will be super usable. On the other hand, Linux has all this stuff that is needed for development and it is amazing in this regard. At least for a desktop PC. When it comes to laptops, it's just a constant stream of workarounds usually. 
close the lid to sleep works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Battery life is significantly worse than on Windows, so when you um, yeah, have uh, four hours of battery life on Windows, then you can expect to have like two and a half or three hours on Linux. I know it's not a big deal, as I said, battery life doesn't matter that much, but still kind of sucks. And uh, I don't even want to start with uh, multi-display support, especially with high DPI as, and scaling. And yeah, that's basically a never-ending pain. Graphic card switching uh, from the integrated to the dedicated graphics cards also doesn't really work. You need to restart the system or lock uh, out and lock back in to actually make the switch possible. So yeah, that's that's. Yeah, that's stuff that I don't want to deal with anymore. And sometimes I wonder how it is possible that those things are still a thing in 2021. But then again, who am I to judge? I simply know for myself, Linux on a laptop, no way. Gone are the times where I had the will and the patience to deal with those things on a daily basis. Now it's all about getting stuff done and making my clients happy. So. After the two runs about the other operating systems, let's have a look at macOS. Even though it's also not perfect, but in terms of developer friendliness, it kind of combines all the good things from the two systems. It gives you access to all the development tools that you need, just like Linux, and stays mostly hassle-free with all the other things that suck on Linux, basically. So, like the stuff that I mentioned and like other. And yes, I know it's a closed system and it is not customizable and so on. But from the perspective of a professional, I don't care. I get paid to solve problems for my clients and the faster and the easier I can solve them, the better. But it's also not all sunshine with Apple and their shiny laptops. There are two main points that made me still hesitate a bit to actually get the laptop. That thing is expensive though. Where some other manufacturers shine is warranty and customer service. For professional laptops, you usually have the option to book a next day pickup and replace option. So if something goes wrong with your device, you're taken care of and can continue working and serving your clients. For Apple, there is no such thing. Even if you buy the protection plan or whatever the thing is called, you still need to send the laptop in and wait for the repair. Once an Apple sales rep even suggested to me, and that is with a 100% straight face, yeah, just send the laptop in and buy a new one. Then you have a 14 days uh, return period where you can use the other laptop and maybe in those 14 days, the repair of your, of your laptop will be done. Then you can just uh, send the other one back and we will refund the money if everything is fine with it. And I'm like, Really? Like, are you serious? Is this the best thing that you can offer? But with all the other reasons to go with it, I'm kind of willing to accept those inconveniences and live with them. And I think that that is what Apple is counting on. All right. I hope you liked this video and got some value out of it. If so, please consider going super crazy on the subscribe button and the bell icon. That would mean a lot to me and that would tell YouTube that you like my content and help uh, to show my content to more people. So see you guys in the next video.